What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're going to be talking about Alter Genesis, the next set that's going to be released in Japan. Uh, with all the Hidden Fates madness that's been going on, I, we have not been able to keep up with all the cards that have been announced. Uh, so instead of going over like 50 cards, we're just going to go over four that I found really interesting that I kind of want to share with you all. Um, as always, I got all this information from PokeBeach.com, and uh, so let's get into our first one. This one's pretty cool. Alright, so we got Bolt Corona, and it comes in as a GX with 210 HP, and the ability is a thing that I find very interesting. <clears throat> so, Scorching Bomb. Once during your turn before your attack, you may discard a fire energy from your hand if you do put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. This is really cool. It's just like a new way to do damage that, you know, you're just discarding cards from your hand and applying a little bit of damage to your opponent. Uh, for Backfire, two red, one colorless, 160 return two fire energy from this Pokemon to your hand. It's like, oh, okay, I guess that's supposed to set up for more Scorching Bombs, but that's kind of strange. Never, not many cards are reverse ramp, <laughs> ramp down. <laughs> And then for the GX attack, we have Great Heat Wave, discard energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. That is a terrible GX attack in my opinion. The chances where that energy breaks your opponent, because it doesn't do any damage, I find very unlikely. Even its other attack, um, 160 is not bad, but to remove two hand energies from your hand, I feel like you have to be pretty desperate uh, to need those two. So to be honest, I feel like Volcarona is a really cool card that should just be on the bench. Um, I'm not even sure if I agree with ever attaching energy to it, to be honest. And for Scorching Bomb, I really like this. It's kind of like just an alternate win condition or alternate way to apply damage. So I really like the creativity of it. I feel like it's a little bit weak. I feel like, I wonder if three damage counters would have been perfect. Uh, although I do understand, I feel like Especially for new mechanics like this, alternate win conditions, there's a very thin line between very cool but not strong enough to overpowered. So, you know, I kind of feel like this is a little bit on the weak side, weak to weak side to be, or I would have preferred to see a little bit stronger, but maybe it would quickly fall into the line of overpowered. And let's just talk about a potential setup. Um, I'm not this. Not sure how realistic this is, but just to go through uh, some... Alright, what can we do with this card? So, we're gonna make some assumptions, but uh, we got Professor Elm's Lecture from Lost Thunder, it's still in rotation. Search your deck for three Pokemon with 60 HP or less, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So the part to hear that I make an assumption on is that Larvesta hasn't been announced, but let's just assume that it's 60 HP or less. So we, we pop Professor Elm and boom, we got three little Larvestas. And here comes the trickiest part in my, or assume, assuming this, with that assumption, I feel like the tricky part will be getting the Volcaronas. Like, yeah, we have Cherish Ball, but it's kind of like a one for one. Uh, I'm not sure how we need to find a creative way to tutor up a bunch of Volcaronas and then essentially evolve them. Uh, there was that new card, red and blue, but that, I feel like red and blue is for when you need ramp up, and in my opinion, the goal here is not to have energy on these. These are just for these guys on the bench, and kind of like, just kind of like, almost like mortar them with fire energies from 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 a distance. Um, it's almost like, uh, I'm not sure how many magic plays out there, but it's kind of like Valakit in my opinion. And then you need the, the mountains to kind of combo off. But all right, we got our Larvestas on our bench and we didn't die somehow. We, we managed to pull it off luckily. And all right, now we just need some fire energy. So I feel like there is a bunch of support. That's why a lot of fire decks are really relevant right now. You got stuff like Giant Hearth, discard one card, find two fire energy from your deck, awesome. We got Fiery Flint still in rotation, discard two cards, eh, that's starting, the price is kind of high, but you grab four, that's plenty of ammo. And then, all right, uh, my hand is empty. Let's pop some fire crystals to get three more. Um, and then like essentially every single turn we're, we're tossing 60 damage, which isn't a lot, which is kind of like, I wonder if it was three or uh, 30 damage. So in this combo, you can do like 90 per turn, uh, discarding three fire energy. I feel like that's not terribly overpowered. Uh, four, like 160 is definitely, um, 
or rather, rather 40 to 120. Yeah, okay, that's maybe too powerful, but I feel like 30 could have been okay. And then uh, from Remix Pal, we got Lady. I believe this is just straight off search. Look for your, look through your deck. Take four basic energies. Put them in your hand. Uh, and energy energy retrieval after you you know uh, when you run out of fire crystals. Uh, it's not great, but it's just another option if you already ran through all your fire crystals. Uh, so I feel like this would be a really a fun combo to try to pull off. Is it going to be strong enough to stand up to like the insane tag teams? Probably not. Um, but I you know I do like this card. It's creative, and I want I. This looks like something that's fun to try out. All right, that was a long time to spend the first Pokemon. Uh, the next shoot three should go quicker. Next one we have Ori Oreo Corio. <laughs> kind of hard for me to say. Uh, this is always a funny Pokemon. I feel like they always compare it to like a cheerleader kind of thing. And yeah, this is kind of basically follows that theme. So comes in at GX 170 HP basic type, which is huge. And actually, we're gonna hit the attacks first because. This is another Pokemon. It never belongs in the active, even if it is, you know, if you're gonna put an energy on it, it's not to attack, it's to retreat. Uh, but we do have Razor Wing coming in for Psychic and two Colorless for only 80 damage. Uh, and then Strafe GX, it kind of has a built-in retreat where you can switch this, but I don't think that's worth the GX attack. Uh, I feel like you have to be pretty desperate to use that, otherwise just put an energy, switch them out, and then do something with the new active Pokemon. But Dedicated Dance, this thing is really cool. Once during your turn, if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you may draw three cards. And this card, they definitely need the clause of you can't use more than one of these per turn. So uh, you can only activate one of these per turn, So, uh, but it's a basic type, it's GX, so it's only a Cherish Ball away, it's pretty easy to get out. And so, and that this is great, because, um, you know, it's kind of protected from things like Reset Stamp. Um, just be or judge, for example, because when when your opponent attacks, that's when you get knocked out. Unless it's still something like Volcarona or something. At that point, that's the end of their turn. So 90% of the time, if you lose, if you, your Pokemon faints, it's because your opponent attacked you. So then it's your turn, so you can always pop or usually pop this ability. And yeah, it's kind of a defensive thing if they custom catcher or I think it's like a new great catcher thing that's coming out. That oh well, you know, it's, it's kind of like an easy target for two prizes, but you know, in a, in a tag team meta where most likely your your tag team your tag team Pokemon's out there, and if your opponent spends a turn just to knock out something from your bench that isn't the primary threat, like yes, that's two prizes. Maybe like unless you lose the game right then and there, like to me that's not a terrible situation where all right, you didn't you didn't do anything to my tag team. I'm putting them back in the active, and. Yes, you got two prize cards, but now maybe that's the time, all all the time I needed to get my tag team to a point where I'm going to one hit KO all your, the rest of your Pokemon. So yeah, I think this is a pretty well designed card. Feels pretty balanced in my opinion, um, and a, a pretty cool mechanic. All right, now we got two trainer cards. The first one being Beastite. Beastite. I think that's how you say it. Uh, it's a very interesting card. I don't think it's terribly strong, but I like the design of it. Uh, so it does. You do have to attach it to an Ultra Beast, and essentially for every prize card you have already taken, uh, tax of this Ultra Beast, this card attacks you do 10 more damage for each prize you've taken to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's kind of like, oh, it powers up, but it's based on how far along you are with completing the game. Um, you know, if we were to just do a straight comparison to um, the the, the one that's just like 30 straight up 30 like I feel like that one the flexibility of that one is just better but I kind of like the idea of this is it good enough I'm not sure uh, but I feel like it's a pretty well designed card you know it has if when you see this in your open hand like oh all right this is something I'm going to discard to something but then like in the late game you know I feel like it has a good not risk reward but like you know it the when it's appropriate, it's super appropriate. When it's not, it's a dead card. And I kind of like those things. And then the last card is a super simple one. Tag Whistle. There's only there's only like one sentence here. Search your deck for up to two tag team Pokemon and put it into your hand. Oh, then shuffle your deck, so two sentences. Uh, so very straightforward and you know, a kind of, I still think it's a pretty well designed card, but it, and at the face of it, this just screams to me card advantage. Uh, like anytime you can take one card and turn it into two cards, like 
I'm a big fan of that and that's always it's always like mmm yes give me give me three of those and um, but I, and I don't think it's overpowered like there aren't many situations when you want multiple tag teams so I feel like it's card advantage but it's not too crazy like oh cool now you have two Reshizards it, not sure why you need to but you have them uh, but you know at the same time it's kind of like uh, if you have other GX that's when you go with Cherish Ball but if you know you want the tag teams or you have multiple tag teams a bunch of them then you can use this tag whistle super simple super straightforward and if you for the right deck it's just it's just straight value <laughs> two for one love it um, so that's it for the, the cards that kind of caught my eye uh, as new cards come out and some stuff that was already announced definitely we'll go over that uh, but yeah let me know what your thoughts are for any of these cards um, do you see anything that other possibilities I kind of overlooked I think my favorite one is that Volcarona one is it good enough to be super elemental I kind of think not uh, but I just love the idea of the card um, you know this as far as I'm aware, since I've gotten back into Pokemon, I'm not aware of a mechanic like that. And so I just like that idea. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. And reminder, the we will announce the winner of the giveaway for the pin collection box tomorrow morning, super early. So this is kind of like the last chance to enter. If you're not ready, all I have to do is find the giveaway video, which I'll post up here soon. And all I have to do is like the video, be a subscriber, and put a comment uh, hashtag turtle giveaway and you will be entered to win one of those pin collection boxes from hidden fates all right on that guys thanks for watching i'm moana turtle and i'll catch you guys next time